Hi, this is Greg with Butter Suspension. Uh, we got something old to work on today. Um, I graduated from high school in 1993, and the next year, Manitou made this fork, the Manitou 3. Um, I believe these got 60 millimeters of travel, or just a little over two inches, um, which back in the day was a lot. Um, we're going to rebuild this thing. We're going to update the elastomers. Um, and I'm also going to tell you that this fork, this specific fork, is the reason why we're doing this video is because it's in such good shape. Um, normally these things are either completely trashed or the elastomers are either dust or rubber or goo. So um, I've already kind of taken this thing apart just to check it out ahead of time and the elastomers overall are in good shape. We're still going to replace them. Um, and I also have, because I hoard parts, a brand new seal kit for this thing as well as bushings. So. Basically, it's a complete rebuild, all new parts, um, but this thing is so clean inside, it's more of a kind of showing you how it goes when everything is in good shape. So, um, if you are thinking about rebuilding one of these, the first thing I would do is just check and see what the condition of the elastomers is and how much time you really feel like you want to spend on it, because when they melt, when they totally just gunk everything up, it's a nightmare. So, um, come along, let's party. As an example of maybe a fork you should just let go, I have this old original Manitou. Um, and as you can see, this thing has a couple things going on. One is the circlips, um, I think they've started to rust, but also the elastomers have melted to the point where they started to like goop out. Um, Unless you want to pay me a lot of money, like hourly, I am not going to mess with this type of stuff. It's just not worth the time. Um, it's just a nightmare to get that stuff out. So generally, these go over here. That's why we get to work on the fancy one. It's so nice to work on the nice stuff. It's basically just like any other fork. There are kind of two zones, if you will. You get the lower legs, which slide off the uppers, and then you have all the guts that go inside. Um, this fork is very simple. Um, it only has elastomers. It doesn't have a damper. There's no oil. It basically just runs on grease, um, which is nice because they're very simple to work on. Um, but like I said before, the downside with elastomers is they just don't uh, have very good longevity. Um, side note, they also are terrible in the cold uh, because they're literally just hunks of rubber. They change as the weather changes. So when it gets really, really hot, these get super soft. And when it gets really, really cold, they get super hard. So you can see why they went away from these for many reasons. Um, so we're gonna just take these out first. These are the top cap slash adjuster rods. And this is kind of why I was excited to work on this because they almost never come out this sparkly. But you will notice when I take these out, hmm, what's going on there? So we're not missing elastomers, it's just that they are, we'll see if we can get this. They're just crumbly hunks of crap. So that's gonna be kind of our challenge with these today. Are you getting it? Can you see it? Let me try, a little bit. It's, it's a little difficult. Yeah, we'll pull it out. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I've already kind of, like I said, taken this fork apart, but we'll just kind of go through the motions here. I always find it easier to work on these when everything's apart. That way I don't have to wiggle between left, right, top and bottom. Just pull these bolts. If you wanted to get real fancy back in the day, you could replace the titanium. What? What? I get it, but what, five grams? <laughs> Come on. All right, the arch is off. And then if you just wiggle these out, it's nice to separate it from the crown. You can see this one's pretty shiny. Crown's pretty nice. Oh, and this one, if you can see that, OEM. So that just means that this came stock on a bike. Uh, 
which is a clue. This is going to be part of a future video because it came off a bike. Okay, I have already taken this one partially apart as well. There's a screw in the bottom. You could also replace this with tie, make it so light. And I'll loosen that and pop it. Then this whole thing slides out. But I want to show you the way that this is held together. There's a metal circlip, there's a dust wiper, and the circlip sits in a, a little groove in there. And then this also has just kind of a, a secondary dust wiper. The reason why I'm not taking this off right now is because this still has the original stickers that tell you how far to go up and I kind of want to keep that intact because you can't really get those stickers anymore. Um, but you'll pop this circlip out and I'll show it on this one. Um, pop the circlip out and then if you just pull this out the upper leg comes away from the lower and you can see on this upper leg that's the upper bushing and the lower bushing. They're just plastic. These have virtually no wear, um, so they're in pretty good shape. This is your um, bottom out bumper. So this is your the rod that pushes up on the internal spring, but this is the bottom out bumper. So when you use all 60 of your millimeters of travel, but you can see this one is still pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also, it's old, so we're gonna replace it. This is, I have literally not done anything to this fork. If you can see inside there. That looks pretty clean. Pretty sparkly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's brand new, <clears throat> which is nice. They are almost never like that. And then the, the rod is held in place with this metal clip. It literally just slides onto two little grooves right there. And just like every other fork that I'm working on, I'll always Take apart, set it aside in the order that it goes. You can also take lots of pictures. So that's the old one, set that there. These are split, so they just pop right off. This one should slide off. Wiper, circlip, top wiper, and then this also has a top out bumper. Also sparkly and brand new. Yes, no? A little bit. Okay, cool. I think one of the biggest downsides to this older Mantu stuff is they really used a lot of plastic. And as long as you were just generally riding, not crazy aggressive riding, and as long as you maintain your stuff, that's fine. But eventually plastic just doesn't hold up to really hard abuse. Um, you can see this has like a brass insert, but it's pressed into plastic. So there were some forks that I've seen in the past where they just got destroyed and worked and you go to take them apart and things just snap. Um, not that if this was aluminum that it wouldn't break or snap, but it's just way less likely. Um, this is lighter. I mean, I'll give them that. And you know, they did care about weight and I'm sure this is pretty easy to manufacture. Um, but long-term this stuff just didn't hold up. So, all right. Just for fun, we're gonna break open my vintage kit. 1994. Even comes with new bolts on the bottom. Not like I need them, but pretty cool. So just line everything up. I'm gonna reuse this. And then the elastomers I get from 
suspension fork parts. Dot net. As far as I know, they're the only game in town. Um, this kit is 60 bucks uh, plus shipping, which it's like I don't know if that's really expensive or not, but it doesn't matter because if you want to rebuild this fork, you have no other options. <laughs> don't don't buy old elastomers because these are already old elastomers. Why would you go look for vintage parts that doesn't? They're going to be as crappy as anything else. Whereas these are, you know, recently manufactured, so they still have their squish. Blech. They include a little packet of slick oleum. I'm 99.9% .9 sure this is slick honey, slick oleum, Judy butter. It's all the same stuff. I got a big tub of it, so. Um, but it's nice that they include that. It's even almost the same color. Oh yeah, it's the same stuff. Yeah. And then if you look at this, two different diameters internally. One is for going onto the, the push rod to replace these guys and this guy. And then these little ones are to go onto this rod. Um, we're gonna do this one first because this one we gotta fish all that crap out. So. And you can kind of see the other thing that happens with these, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, is that right? Did you guys send me the right amount? Yeah, cool. Um, they get kind of squished, like an old man's spine. And so this will also, sometimes you'll have a saggy fork. So you can see how stacked that is. And that's without the little spacers between them. Um, so this will get the fork back to its original ride height because as they get compressed the fork just goes down 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 You can kind of lift it up dick, dick, dick. Um, but These all just slide off And then you reuse all the Spacers, so this is your preload adjuster Let's See if I can get this to go so you can see how this as I preload it Boop, 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 boop. And just like on a coil spring, all that does is take your spring that's this big and compress it, effectively, not really stiffening it, but kind of preloading it, like putting a little extra load before the rider gets on. So it's kind of a way of saying, like if you're 190 pounds and you need to set up uh, a spring that's set up for a 180 pound rider, you can kind of dial this in. It doesn't do a ton, but it does give you some adjustment as far as um, pre-loading the springs. So, so you can see here, shorter, and also it's got this little ring where it kind of schmooed up into the, the spacer. So just line them up <coughs> and replace them. And a little Slick Honey makes everything on this better. These things really want lube on the inside and the outside. That's what they said. Um, <clears throat> just makes everything compress as it should. Um, it's not only important to have uh, Slick Honey on this rod so that these can kind of compress on the inside, but also since this is gonna eventually get squished and hit, it's gonna take a lot of force, but it can hit the inside of the um, upper leg. You wanna make sure that it's able to move instead of getting stuck. These are, yeah, pretty snug. Cool. And I'm just cleaning it as I go. You can also see on these, they've split. Let me. Let's do that again. Hold on. You see it? A little, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see the split right here. Oh, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, for sure. Cool. So that's one. And then... What the? I'm all out of alcohol. I don't want to hear anything about alcohol. 
These are the choices we make. <laughs> okay. So this one, I'm gonna clean this out. I'm gonna preload this, but it's not gonna go on. So this is just like a little pre-wiper, if you will. It's just like a scraper. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is in, in replacement of like these, you could get the aftermarket boots. Um, they kind of worked. They also kind of keep mud in too, so it's trade off. Um, this thing would still work, but I mean, I've got new ones, why not use them? It's nice. Got the brushes. It's a little rusty. And this is the other wiper. Top bushing. Lower bushing. And then. This one is the top out bumper. Juice it up. Oh, actually, we'll just do a little, little schmoo on the inside. And this one should drop down. So the top out bumper, you can kind of, I don't know if you can see, Basically, I'm just giving pressure. It's so that when you top out, when you use compression and then come back up, instead of being like a clack, it's a, it's a soft bump. Fork top out always sounds and feels terrible. Now, I'm not gonna put this in here yet because it still has to go through the crown. Um, but because this is kind of all captured, that's gonna be okay. Um, this is our bottom out bumper. I'm just going to slide this up to the clip. You want to make sure this clip goes all the way on. Come on, buddy. There you go. And so this is the bottom out. Um, so this is your, this is your travel right here. And then you get a little bit more when you compress it on the big hits, bro. <laughs> Set all these aside. These are all junky junk junk. I'm going to put a little bit of this right here. So this is just um, ProLink, which is my favorite chain lube. They do not pay me to say that. It really is my favorite chain lube. I also like it because you can put it in spots like this. Um, and it just starts to break down some grease and oils. So sparkly. A little schmoo on the inside. And then I'll also put some here where that bushing is gonna go in. And the bush right there give it a little wiggle and then this is kind of an old motorcycle trick you can't leave it on here but you can use the old bushing to push in the new one. Beep. So see how that kind of pushed that down in there? Mm -hmm. And then we push this seal in. Actually, I'm gonna put a little schmoo under there. Not a lot. screwdriver. Gentle. There we go. Heard it. 
Come on, buddy. Of course, this one's brand new, so it's gonna laugh at me. The old one's a little dried out. Another trick is get the circlip started. It kind of holds it in place. Click. Cool. So obviously we don't have that much travel, but that's how much movement you can get out of it. And then, because I don't have the elastomers in there, I want something to shove the foot nut or the rod all the way to the bottom. And we use the brand new screw. Actually, might as well, they never did. No titanium. Gotta get that Tyranium upgrade. Don't get me wrong, tie bolts are cool. I like tie bolts, but if you think you're improving performance that much, you're fooling yourself. Okay. There we go. That's all you get. <laughs> that much. So that's one leg done. Pretty simple. Um, we're gonna, the only thing we're gonna do on the other leg is Hopefully get all that crap out, the old one, but we won't go through the whole procedure because it's literally the same thing on the other side. Um, so let's take this one apart and see what we get. So this is the other leg, um, and you can see here, this is a melty melty. Um, on some of these, if you push it hard enough, you can actually just squish it. Um, so, but, yeah. There we go. Come on. You can see how much easier this is when everything is in really good shape. Um, so uh, this is the one that had the dissolved or messed up bumpers. So we'll just push this out. Not too bad. <laughs> so this was two elastomers. Uh, the other one is somewhere in a bag somewhere. I think I already took this thing apart to inspect it. But you can see how this, if it wasn't an easy design to just push out, like I had a guy who came in with a, uh, a RockShox Indy. So same general idea, but the difference is on the Indy, you take off the top cap, you take out the elastomers, and the screw that holds the fork together is under the elastomers inside. There's nothing from the bottom. So he brought that fork in and his elastomers weren't like this. They were just goo, more like this. And I said, no, we're done because I was gonna have to literally drill out all the goo and get all the way down and find that bolt. And it just wasn't worth his money or my time. So at least with this design, you can take the whole thing apart, push out the stuff, clean it up, put it back together. So, um, okay, so. We're just going to pretend like we've done the other side because it's literally the exact same thing. Um, this is going to be uh, left side. So these come with little stickers that tell you don't put it in any more than that. Got a. If you can see that. Take a look at that. Doot, doot. Oh yeah. Um, and also, it's kind of cool. They they kind of scuffed these where it meets with the crown so that it's a little bit better grip. Um, but you want to be careful, just get it right kind of up to that sticker. Um, you can also just make it flush um, so that you know that it's basically fully inserted. You do not want this halfway inserted or your teeth are going to go all over the ground when you crash because it's bad. Um, and then I'm just going to gently tighten these because I don't want this to move while I'm installing this. And we take the new stack, grease the crap out of it, but don't do so much that it smears all over the outside of the fork because that's just a big mess. Get some on the bottom, and then come on buddy. 
Oh yeah, that's... And these are the stiff ones. I went for the big boy. Uh, suspension fork parts sell these in medium and firm. Tighten that down. And you, you, <clears throat> you wanna make sure that when you're tightening this down, so I just have this set uh, so that I don't damage the sticker. But if you can, you want to have it so that this tightens into this, but not necessarily onto this. Uh, I hope that makes sense because this blue part, it's basically the cap, has a little O-ring that engages. Um, it probably touches this as well, but you want to make sure that it engages this black tube because that's what's going to keep water out. Um, as a personal opinion, I know people still ride these things, but you could also just maybe not ride it in super rainy stuff or super dirty stuff because man the new stuff is so much better but i get it people love their vintage stuff so um and then this slides down clips way smoother no no slop um and then bolt all your stuff back on mount it back on the bike and you're good to go um, that's it. That's all I got. Um, if you have any questions, again, always leave them in the comments. Um, let me know what you think and stay tuned for the future video that will be featuring this fork as well as some other cool stuff. So, Happy New Year.